We are pleased to welcome Linda Bowden, who is New Jersey Regional President, PNC Bank, and also the Chairwoman of New Jersey Chamber of Commerce. Good to see you, Linda. You too, Steve, always. Make it clear what the Chamber's role is. Uh, the Chamber's role, put very simply, is to ensure that the business environment in New Jersey is friendly, that there's a vital economy that indeed is able to enhance the business person's success. What's standing in the way of the state being more, quote, business friendly? You know, I think all states have issues, certainly, and New Jersey's not alone. Obviously, people talk about taxes. There's no question that we are one of the higher tax states that does put a burden on our businesses, especially small business. But what I would say is, and the governor has said this repeatedly, if you're a single-issue voter, if taxes are the only thing you care about, maybe we're not necessarily the state for you, but we feel, as a state, there are many other things we can offer from a business perspective. The second thing I would say is workforce development. You know, What's that mean? Well, you know, Steve, being part of PNC Bank, we have many middle market customers, and that really is the bread and butter of our state. And when you go out and talk to these folks, they will tell you that one of their greatest challenges is finding, not finding people, but finding people with the specific skills needed for their business. So what we're trying to do, and, and I know the governor's leading this, Tom Bracken, our president. Tom Bracken, president of the president state chamber. President of the state chamber, Michelle Sikirka from NJBIA. We've got some wonderful business leaders. What we're working hard to do is to ensure that there's a strong partnership between business and higher ed so that our universities, our county colleges in particular, have the kinds of programs that will allow people to graduate with the kinds of skills our business people need. And if I could give you an example, sure. I was just with one of our customers uh, really maybe two months ago, and they do uh, clips for machinery, huge business with this, 800 employees in the state of New Jersey, clearly a business we want to keep here. And I asked him point blank, how are you finding doing business here? What are the challenges? What are the good things? Obviously, accessibility in the state is a big positive. People find this a very easy place to do business Location from. Location matters. Location matters, transportation hub, et cetera. The thing that this, this CEO mentioned more than anything, he said, I can't find the kind of skilled labor I need to hire. I know there are people out there to hire, but I need very specific skills. And if the state could help me in training these people so they can come right on, there's less of a ramp up time, that mm. would be huge for us. So I think that's a way we can differentiate ourselves. I'm curious about this. By the way, uh, PNC, an initiative, uh, Grow Up Great. Yes, for, yes, yes, for, yes. That yeah. we collaborate with, yeah. uh, focused on, let everybody know what Grow Up Great all stands. It's just not just it's, a slogan. It's Grow Up Great, helping children five and under to grow up great. So we work hard to try and give them a head start so that, and this does have business implications, so they can grow up and be productive, contributing members of our community here in New Jersey. Absolutely. Let me ask you this, Linda. Do you ever notice how people are divided in, in this sense? Many people, not all. But they get focused on, are you for big business or for business or against business? Mm -hmm. As if... It's mutually exclusive. Well, well also yeah. as if business are yeah. not employing people. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think there are, there are some circles where big business has become sort of a dirty word, but if you think about it and you strip this down to the bare essentials, it's all about the jobs. It's all about the jobs here in this state. We want to keep people. We want to attract people. And we want them paying taxes and on the Abs income they're making absolutely, with those jobs. Absolutely, absolutely. So it, if you think about it, it can be a very productive cycle. We bring people in, give them jobs, they're paying taxes. Mm -hmm. That allows us to contribute to infrastructure, workforce development, and so forth. Let me shift gears in the time we have left. You were on our uh, radio show on AM 970. Mm -hmm. We have a leadership hour radio show in which Linda talked about leadership and a range of issues. I asked you that there. I'm going to ask you it here. Being a great leader for a woman, in your view, any more challenging, difficult, different for a guy? <laughs> Steve, you and I have talked over the past 10 years uh, about this topic. And first I of still all, struggle with I it. I know, I know. That's okay. I think, um, first of all, banking is a good field for women. But let's face it. You look at the Fortune 500 companies, there are still very few women at the top. And that number with Denise Campbell Soup, with Denise That's Morris right. and her departure, that number went down even more. So we still have a ways to go, whether it's head of company, whether it's board membership, whether it's just being a very senior advisor. So I think if you ask me, what's the differentiator? How can women get ahead? I do think women bring a certain collaborative sense to the leadership role. And, you know, studies are showing now that one of the most important aspects of being a leader is empathy. 
I mean, we didn't have that out there years ago, but empathy, understanding what your employees are going through, ensuring that you're listening to your employees. You know, I've said to you several times, I'm a believer in values flowing down and ideas mm -hmm. flowing up. We as leaders set the tone. We really put the value set in place. We model that behavior, but you have to be open to ideas bubbling up, and that's the way you can get better. Diversity is another aspect, obviously. I, More sensitive to the need for it? I, you know, I don't know that because I certainly work with many men who are very sensitive to it. But let's face it, we are diverse candidates. Women right now are still diverse candidates. So maybe we can be a little bit more sensitive to what it's like to be the only one in the room, what it's like to necess not necessarily have other people who look like you there. So I think the more we can do to ensure that there's diversity across mm -hmm. gender, race, thought, you know, that, that ethnicity, the better off we'll be. Leadership and empathy. Very much linked together. Linda Bowden is not just the uh, New Jersey Regional President of PNC Bank. She's also the Chairwoman of uh, the New Jersey Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you, Linda, for joining us. Thank you, Steve. Well As done. always, take care. This is uh, State of Affairs. We want to continue the conversation. So please check me out, our whole team out, uh, at Steve Adubato. We'll keep the conversation going, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of State of Affairs with Steve Adubato has been provided by NJIT, the law firm of Gibbons PC, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the New Jersey Education Association, Keystone Mountain Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters, Englewood Health, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by NJ Advance Media and by Insider NJ.